Hey guys, it's Sajid Dan one again here with a new video, and I apologize for the delay, but I've just been really busy and trying to enjoy the little free time I have nowadays, but I'm here to make a new video, and I've been wanting to do this video, and I wanted to talk about some of the favorite games I enjoyed this year, so a lot of games came out, and I enjoyed quite a bit of games, and of course, you, you should know my taste if you're subscribed to me. If you've been subscribed to me for a while, you should know my taste that I don't really play a lot of more mainstream stuff. I tend to wait on those and get them when they're cheaper because, of course, they're going to be cheaper eventually. So, I, you know me. You should know my kind of taste and kind of what to expect. So, expect a very different style list, but this is in no particular order because I hate doing top tens and stuff like that because it just opens it up for flame wars of people who just can't get it through their head that people have different tastes and preferences for games. But this is in no particular order, and I'm just going to get started. So... To start things off, I want to talk about two downloadable games that are very, very good. And I really think this year was the year of downloadable games. You're starting to see a little more prevalence in downloadable games. You're starting to see them rise to the importance of big budget games. You know, even I think of stuff like The Walking Dead and Journey and stuff like that. But the first two games I want to mention, the first one being a great one. I was happy that they finally brought this over to PSN. I had no idea they were going to bring it over. That they're like Sony was like, hey, you know, it's bringing it PlayStation Network. It was a full game in Japan, and that is Tokyo Jungle. Tokyo Jungle is absolutely fantastic. I was hooked on it. I was really anticipating it. Bought it pretty much the the week of release, and I just got absolutely hooked to it. And I wound up playing it pretty much every weekend from there on out for months. If you don't know what Tokyo Jungle is, it's a roguelike kind of game but with the animal kingdom it's about the animal kingdom and it's post-apocalyptic tokyo and there is some story to it you can unlock story missions that kind of tell what happened in tokyo because it doesn't explain it right away you just know it's post-apocalyptic tokyo and all these animals are just fighting for survival in this you know kind of overrun tokyo which is nothing but different animals so it just progresses year by year. The basic mode and the mode you'll probably be playing the most in the game is survival mode where you just pick an animal of your choice and try and survive for as long as possible. That's basically the premise. Lots of interesting mechanics though. You can pick up items which have various effects. And as the years go on, you'll start to see it gets more and more challenging. You'll start to see animals pop out in some of the later years that you would have never seen before. Some really dangerous animals. Lots of like kind of toxic levels that kind of happen because I think that has something to do with the post-apocalyptic. But it's just a really fun game, man. And it does have like challenges to do when you're playing survival. And that's kind of the main way to unlock some new stuff and whatnot. And the main way to unlock new animals is to play survival and try and unlock, do a certain amount of challenges in survival to be able to challenge like the, they call them like the boss you know, animal or whatever, sometimes sometimes to unlock new characters you either have to fight them and kill the boss animal in the area or you have to take over the spot and basically there's uh, how it works is Tokyo is breaking down into little areas and there's like little marking spots, you mark your territory and if you mark your territory you can then mate with the animal and a female of course and you can mate with them and that's basically a way to kind of progress because your animal can only survive for around 15 years before before they start getting older you'll start to see their stamina drop really quick so you want to be able to mate and continue into a new generation and your new generation inherits your stats and you'll have like multiple little <laughs> creatures running around with you and those kind of act as lives because once one dies you move into the next one and so on and you can have like team attacks and stuff it's just insanely addicting. It feels like Metal Gear Solid or something with animals sometimes where you're sneaking up on a creature and you're ready to pounce and then bam, just strike on them. Very rewarding, just a very satisfying, quirky, quirky game that I just fell in love with and I finally did get my kind of goal that I set for myself which was surviving for a hundred years in survival mode. Did it with a Lycon, a wild dog. I was really happy to do that but I just have fun just picking it up and playing if you're looking for a quirky, quirky, quirky roguelike style kind of game, you know, something like The Binding of Isaac or Spelunky, then definitely, definitely check out Tokyo Jungle. I was really happy to see it come out, and for a great price too, considering it was a full retail in Japan, so definitely check out Tokyo Jungle. And the next downloadable game I would like to talk about is Sound Shapes. Sound Shapes is an absolutely fantastic game, another PSN wonderful exclusive 
by Santa Monica Studios, and I was really, really anticipating this game because one of the sound design guy I was a big fan of because I believe he worked on Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery, which is one of my all-time favorite indie games. And if you guys don't know, you know, I'm a big JRPG fan, but if I'm, I'm also a really, really huge supporter of indie games in general. I love indie games, and I think our gaming culture would not be able to strive without the indie market and what it provides to the gaming industry in general. But I was really anticipating Sound Shapes, you know, it's made by only like two guys. And the guys are really awesome. I watched interviews with them, really cool down earth dudes. But Sound Shapes is a platformer, but it's really simple platformer, but it's all all based around music and beautiful music. It has an absolutely wonderful abstract art style. It's very simplified, but yet very pretty and gets the job done. Abstract art style, I love it. So you basically progress through these levels and you're just just a little ball. And the mechanic is that you can hold down square, I believe, and move fast, or you can stick to objects when you're, like, white. So that's the whole premise of it. You can stick to, like, white surfaces, and you can move around. And it gets really hard, though. I mean, it starts off simple, but some of the later levels really will challenge you. They introduce tons of little, like, new enemy creatures and stuff that make it a little bit more complicated. And just really awesome level design. You play through various albums. It features actually licensed music by some people like Dead Mouse and back so it's just really interesting it has a community aspect which was part of the reason I was really excited for it because it felt like you know little big planet style that way to, I know the community would be making some really cool stuff and they did I mean you can see the community is really active on there and they're always posting their own levels so which brings me to the other part is that you can make your own levels and sound shapes you can unlock pieces as you go through like the main kind of levels and you'll unlock pieces and notes to be able to use in create mode. Create mode's really intuitive. I kind of messed around with it myself, but you know, really intuitive. You can basically place notes and that'll generate the beat and you can just make your own music, make your own levels. It's just people getting really creative and just really, really awesome game to see. It's it's a beautiful platformer that I just can't help smiling when I play the game. Like it's just fantastic. The music is very fitting and just beautiful. You'll be wanting to collect all the notes through the stages because if you miss a couple notes it kind of sounds a little off and gives you incentive to collect all the notes because you want to hear the full song, how it's meant to be heard. So just a wonderful game with a wonderfully community driven aspect to it. So definitely I highly highly recommend Sound Shapes and I really do think this was the year of the indie as well. We saw it a lot. So a lot of indie games kind of rise up to high status, and particularly I'm thinking of Journey, which I still need to play, but I know I'll love it. So definitely, definitely check out Sound Shapes if you want a unique platformer, just a beautiful, beautiful little quirky indie platformer. Definitely would highly recommend Sound Shapes. And the next game on the list I'd like to talk about is a game that caught me off guard pleasantly. I was pleasantly surprised what I enjoyed it this game actually I wasn't expecting to get into it that much but that is Mugen Souls for the PS3. I really really enjoyed this. Mugen Souls is basically what you get when you take Disgaea and mix in some Hyperdimension Neptunium Mark II elements and you get something like Mugen Souls. It's a kinda action based, turn based RPG and the premise is that you play as this girl named Chu Chu who's basically claiming herself to be the undisputed god of the universe and she's basically taking over all these worlds. So in a way, it feels like you're playing a villain, <laughs> which is really interesting, but interesting dynamic. But you go to these different worlds, and you try and recruit their hero and the demon lord, as they call them. And it's very different. And the whole premise is you go to different areas, and there's like objectives that you have to do in order to kind of combine continents and stuff like that to, prog to progress further. And that's the whole premise of it. You just go from planet to planet, conquering and recruiting new people and but a really really cool facet to it is the battle system is very similar to Neptunium Mark II if you played that but it introduces this really cool feature that I really like called Blast Off where you can literally knock you know, you know your enemies like around a field and all that it's pretty hilarious like pool or something you can plan it out and kind of angle it perfectly or you can launch them straight in the air it's very hilarious I really like that and it, this game introduces a lot of mechanics like there's airship battles in there which are actually pretty cool I wish there were a little bit more of those the mechanic I fell in love with and probably why I'm enjoying this so much is Mugen Field. And Mugen Field is basically where you can go to gr grind to your heart's content, basically. You can grind so many levels and power yourself up incredibly. I literally fought one airship battle, I believe it was, and 
in Mugenfield and with all the like kind of stat boosts they have in Mugenfield that I had, I literally went up in one battle like 45 levels. So it just gives you an idea like you can become very, very powerful, which kind of makes sense since you're an undisputed god. So right now I'm really overpowered in the game. I'm like, I had to increase our level cap actually because we passed that pretty quick. But it's just fun. Like it's really, really fun, really quirky. A lot of the humor will go over your head because, you know, which tends to happen in a lot of Japanese RPGs is especially really niche ones like this, is they don't really work too hard to kind of, you know, westernize the humor, if that makes any sense. So a lot of it's very Japanese humor, and it will definitely go over a lot of people's heads. But definitely not a beginner RPG, but for the right audience who knows what they're looking for, you know, something like a Disgaea, if you enjoyed the, if you enjoyed the Neptunia games, you should definitely check out Mega Souls. I actually really was pleasantly surprised and enjoyed it a lot. Finally, the next game I'd like to talk about is actually a fighting game, and I am not a big fighting game fan at all. I don't consider myself a fighting game fan at all, and I have a hard time just getting into fighting games, and it may, mainly because I, I admit it, I suck at video games really bad. I'm really bad at retro games, I'm really bad at a lot of different games, but I, I suck at games in general, but I have fun with them, and I think that's the most important part. But this game I had to get because what do you get when you take the king of anime fighters in Arc System Works and combine one of the most legendary RPGs of last generation in Persona 4, well, you get this game right here. You get Persona 4 Arena. This game is an absolutely fantastic fighting game that I just lost myself into when it came out. I picked it up on a release date, and I was, I was hooked on it for months. And there's definitely a lot of content here, and it's a very intuitive fighter. You know, there's a lot to learn if you want to be really good at it. But yet, yeah, it's, it's definitely very approachable if you're a beginner noob with auto attack combos and stuff like that. But there's a lot of unique facets to the fighting system, but I really enjoyed the various other modes I had to offer, in particular story mode, which played out like a Japanese visual novel game. And I really like that because they actually do some really interesting stuff with the story, and it's really, really cool in the story to see the characters of Persona 3 and Persona 4 approach each other and how they interact with one another. It's a very interesting dynamic <laughs> to see. But overall, just a really beautiful game, really colorful. It just looks incredible. It's a beautiful game to watch in action. It's fantastic. And I had a lot of fun with it. I definitely lost interest over time because it's a fighting game. I'm not good at them. And I don't feel like committing to a fighting game or putting in the time to get good at it. So, But I would definitely say this is one of my new favorite fighters. And anytime I'm in a fighting game mood, I definitely reach out for Persona 4 Arena. So definitely check out Persona 4 Arena if you're a fighting game fan. And I definitely love Arc System Works too, so I really thank them for doing this fantastic fighter. And this next game is definitely a game that might go overlooked by a lot of people because it came out very early. It came out in March. But I'm a big, big Tales of fan and I had to get it day one. So And it really lived up to my expectations and surpassed some of my expectations. I was pleasantly impressed with this game. That is the wonderful Tales of Grace of Zaf. This is a fantastic game, and a lot, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it. I think that's really unfair, because it is one of the better installments in the Tales of series. It's absolutely fantastic. It's my second favorite Tales of game. And what I love about it is the story is very simple. You know, not too complicated. It gets a little more complicated towards the end. But it's very straightforward, and it kind of focuses around tides of binds of friendship and you know, how those can be pushed and introduces some interesting mechanics. And Asbel does, definitely doesn't steal the show as a main hero, but it's all it's how he interacts with all those other, you know, teammates that makes a really interesting dynamic. Particularly with Sophie, too. I found Sophie to be the star of this game. She was really interesting and provided a really interesting facet to the game. The battle system is fantastic. I think this is the best Tales of Battle System just because it feels insanely fast paced, you know. You won't totally understand it from the beginning and it takes some getting used to, but once you start getting to the later levels, it's insanely fast paced and it works beautifully. It feels so, so smooth and all that, and I just love it. And you get around, even though it kind of eliminates some facets like over limit and kind of just being able to run around for as much as you want. You can't run around as much because there's a limit to it actually, but you find a way around that. But it's just fantastic. I love that battle system. And it's a little more straightforward. There is no overworld per se, you know. There's kind of an overworld in Vesperia and stuff like that where, you know, it's kind of big open environment with enemies. They kind of eliminate that and condense it more into a confined linear kind of path. 
but it still worked out and it's just it had everything it tells of game near to have very interesting lots of cameos and just a very interesting story even though it was partially simple it was a beautiful experience and just a gorgeous game and this is actually Grace's F so this is actually a port of a Wii game and it has a lot of extra content to play and obviously was upgraded for the PS3 to be in HD but lots of extra content the extra content is fantastic it's worth it just to check it out because it literally provides you with like a secondary story after the story that's almost you know 15 20 hours long <laughs> for a secondary story so when all is said and done you're looking at around 80 hours of gameplay here plus so much more I love the title mechanic too where you earn various titles and they give you tons of various effects you can really power yourself up in this game and it's just really really good I re really really impressed with Grace's F it is a PS3 game and people I, I always hear the argument that maybe it's a little bit lacking on content or they could have done so much more but you kinda gotta go into it expecting a Wii game you know and because the Wii limitations of the game you know how much they could do on the Wii is reflected in this game but I'm really impressed like if I'm, I'm sure if I played the Wii game I'm really impressed with what they could have pulled off on the Wii and I think it translates well to a PS3 copy HD version looks beautiful so Tales of Grace is a fantastic if you're a Tales of fan definitely check it out if you're an action RPG fan definitely check it out I don't want to see it go overlooked which it kinda is right now so. finally we're down to two games and there are two games for the Wii and it is great to see the Wii go off on a note with these kind of games it, it's really great to see some fantastic RPGs to the very end and this game I'm going to talk about next is from the great folks at Mistwalker and Mistwalker is a really fantastic company they basically make modern RPGs that feel very classic in inspiration that take heavy inspiration from classic RPGs and this is definitely a fantastic, fantastic game, and that is the last story for the Wii. Again, by great folks on this walker, this is an action-style RPG that feels very, very classic-inspired. I mean, it's just got beautiful, beautiful artwork. I love the character design. The characters are very, very interesting in this game. You will definitely fall in love with the characters. I definitely did. I, I would say this is the most intrigued and most attached I felt to the characters since playing geez I would say I don't know I just really got attached to the characters you you get interested in them and you get interested in their relationships with one another and particularly you know with the two that are on the cover here and with Zell and Callisto because it definitely plays out as a love story and you know a love story in an RPG is one of those things that can be very cliche if, if done wrong or just really bring down the RPG if it's done really terribly but they do it really well and it's just contrasted with this beautiful unique world which is very unique and the battle system is really interesting it's very different I never played a battle system quite like it it's part like real-time action but then pauses during some of it and you just it just uses auto attacks and you can use various magic and it's really interesting battle system and when it works it's really really good it does have some flaws though some really significant flaws which they kind of overlooked in particular you know when care I've experienced this multiple times in the game. I died a lot of cheap deaths because of it, but there's basically times where you'll be in really narrow hallways and you know one of your teammates will be down or someone will be down and you gotta go pick them up obviously, but there's huge enemies in this hallway and you get stuck auto attacking. <laughs> it's like there's really no way to stop auto attacking unless you hold the block button down the whole time. But it's a great RPG. The, the world is very, very dynamic. This game is very dynamic. Like There's a lot of interactivity and stuff you can do. I absolutely love, love Prank Bananas. I think Prank Bananas are the most hilarious thing, and I think more RPGs can benefit from more Prank Bananas. But this is quirky. You can customize your characters, and overall it's a it's a shorter RPG, but that's not a bad thing because the the length of it was good. It wasn't too long, like to the point where it feels like it overstays its welcome, or it wasn't too short where you're kind of like wanting more. It's like just right, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful action RPG with a beautiful story to be told. And you always just lose yourself in general. I lost myself into the world, and into the characters, into everything about this game. Thank you, Miss Walker, for another classic style RPG. <laughs> so definitely check out the last story for the Wii. And finally, we come to the end. A very, very 
fantastic RPG that I think should go down as one of the most memorable RPGs of this console generation. It is basically driven by and inspired by stuff like Fantasy Star Online, but consolidates into a more heavy story experience and a single player experience. It is a game that's going to require a lot of time, a lot of patience to get into it. But when you do, when you play through it all the way, and I strongly suggest playing through it all the way until you make like true final judgments on the game, it is a fantastic RPG that I just completely lost myself into and could not highly recommend more, and that is Xenoblade Chronicles. This is a fantastic, fantastic RPG. Like I said, the battle system works as like a MMO style RPG, but the characters are really interesting, and they get more interesting as the story goes on because it gets very interesting. I would say the second half of this game blows the first half out of the water. Like the second half just becomes, it takes it from like what is a good or a great RPG in the beginning to just a masterful, phenomenal RPG with the storytelling towards the later part. And it was just fantastic. It, was, it felt good, and it it was epic in scope. Like, it is a massive, massive game. Like, some of these environments are just gargantuan, and they're huge. It, I literally spent hours, and I, I would say many times I've experienced this, where I just spent hours traversing the environment, trying to get from one end to the other. But it's beautiful because you want to roam in because these environments are just absolutely stunning. There's some of these environments are just awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping. In particular, I think of like the Satoru Marsh at night or Volnik Mountains at night. It's just absolutely stunning. Some of these environments, gorgeous. It's just so interesting to see all those enemies roaming this massive environment. One of my favorite moments too, and. One of, one of the few moments I had in a game where I just had to stop and admire the scenery was, I believe, you, it's a secret place too, but I believe you climb all the way to the top of the Bionis sword, and it's at the, I would say the halfway point of the game where you're trying to cross over to the sword of the Bionis to get to the outer area, but you get to like this kind of peak peak, like the highest you can possibly get, kind of like watchtower kind of thing, and you're overlooking everything, you can see, literally see the entire Bionis and just everything that's on it, it puts into perspective like that tiny little town down there, I was there, you know, it's just really hard to describe, but it was a really surreal moment. It's just a beautiful, beautiful game with some stunning environments, some stunning music, some epic boss fights, you will experience a wide range of emotions, I definitely did, everything from sadness to absolutely aggravation with some of the bosses, but it challenges you and it doesn't it's driving you and just constantly pushing you forward to get to this final ending, which this ending is the culmination of the whole game. It really sums up everything, including what the Monado Blade is and how you might look at the Monado Blade a little bit differently once you beat the game. But just a very, very stunning RPG that took it to places towards the end that I'd never see coming. And it was a journey. That's what it was. It was basically a long, long journey. And I experienced so much with this game. It was fantastic so much memorable moments with this game so I definitely highly recommend Xenoblade Chronicles please get it while you still can it's one of the most memorable RPGs on the Wii and for me one of the most memorable RPGs of this console generation so definitely check out Xenoblade so we come to the end and it's a very long video but you know you get me starting and talking about some of these fantastic games it's hard to stop but this was definitely a great year for gaming. There's a lot of kind of down moments with some controversies over certain companies and stuff like that. But overall, we saw a lot of memorable games, not just from the mainstream, but I think this is one of the stronger kind of niche years where we saw a lot of fantastic RPGs, saw a lot of fantastic indie games rise up to the caliber of Game of the Year. We saw downloadable games become more prevalent. So fantastic year and I'm really looking forward to next year and actually my next video will be talking about some of the games I'm highly an anticipating next year so definitely thank you for watching it feels good to be back and I'll see you guys later bye guys